Hi, my name is Phil. I like to talk about politics. In this video, I'd like to discuss one of the more self-defeating aspects of people's attempts to keep themselves safe from the coronavirus, namely the overuse or misuse of hand sanitizers. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, then please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, can't get it right, can we? Who'd have thought not paying attention in science lessons at school would cause so much trouble later in life? First of all, nobody is saying not to use hand sanitizers, by the way, in situations where it is sensible to do so. However, a lot of people who, as I said, have not really listened in science lessons have had a few gaps in their knowledge when it comes to hygiene. For example, all the people buying antibacterial products when what we have here is a virus. Yes, some of the antibacterial products are also useful in keeping us free of the virus or at least helping. Many of us are familiar with the concept of overuse or misuse, for example, of antibiotics, which are also only proof against bacterial infections. That seemed to be something that confused the President of the United States, not viruses. When we as a population overuse antibiotics, you end up creating super resistant bugs or when we misuse it. The concept on one level is simple enough. You have an infection, you use antibiotics. Some of the bacteria will have natural resistance. Those that don't die out, as intended, will be freer to breed more because you have just removed the competition for the resistant bugs who will now reproduce much more efficiently. This may be caused by using antibiotics when you didn't really need to, or much more likely, using antibiotics incorrectly. For example, not continuing the full course. There are other ways of bacteria developing immunities as well, such as mutations, which we'll get onto. We don't need to go over all of them. The point is that before you know it, with this sort of behavior, you have encouraged a strain of antibiotic resistant bacteria that will be untreatable until new antibiotics can be developed. And this takes time and becomes increasingly difficult to do. This is why we should only use antibiotics when we need them, not when we are simply inconvenienced by a minor infection that our bodies can easily deal with. We should also ensure that we follow the instructions very carefully. The biggest problem, as I say, tends to be people not completing their course of antibiotics or not taking the correct dosage. But a similar issue has been warned about hand sanitizers now. Excessive use encourages resistant bacteria in just the same way or misuse encourages it in just the same way. And again, I'll emphasize this is not saying don't use hand sanitizers. No, we do. It's just that the excessive use is potentially creating another serious public health issue for the future. And this is a problem that we may create that will still be a problem after some sort of normality returns after the pandemic. An additional problem has been homemade sanitizers. Needless to say, very, very likely you are not actually making sanitizers at home, even if you think you are, even if you are following the instructions. You may be making something, however, with antibacterial properties that can lead to superbugs developing without offering you any proof against the coronavirus. And it is against this background that a toxicologist by the name of Winston Morgan has been warning about the problems that our sudden explosion of hygiene measures may be storing up for the future. His greatest fear is for mutations to occur as a result of some of these chemicals, particularly the weakened ones that people are making themselves. So what do we do? The advice is not to avoid using these products as such. The advice is to make sure that you follow the guidance on the products. If you buy a hand sanitizer that doesn't really come with any guidance, then seek some guidance, preferably on a site such as from the NHS or the government, uh, a reliable source. Only use the products as directed on the guidance. Effectively treat them as prescription medicines. Don't dilute the products and don't make your own. They're crap and will do more harm than good. And that is a point to emphasize again. If you think you are making homemade sanitizers, the chances are you are not. The alcohol content in actual sanitizers is extremely high. That in homemade versions is not. It will do nothing to protect you from the virus and has a much heightened chance of simply breeding superbugs. If you do insist on making homemade ones, the advice is to use instructions only from the government and to only use the ingredients stated. No substitutes that someone on Facebook says does basically the same job.
No, it doesn't. So there you are, more food for thought. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, then please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.